couple months ago, I recorded a video about me transferring my coral reef tank from a temporary holding tank to a Fluval Evo 13.5. And I got a lot of great comments and feedback from the reefing community about how to remove algae and, you know, what I should have done before setting up this tank. So let's see where this tank is now because I'd love to show you guys what I've added and maybe what's not done so well. A couple weeks ago, I decided to get a couple of coral from Worldwide Corals, which has amazing deals on coral and other invertebrates for your tank. These specifically came from a reef to reef flash sale so that I could try some new coral and replace some of the coral that had passed. I really like worldwide corals because they always come perfectly packaged. I've never really had a problem with their coral. Um, they're one of the biggest distributors of coral, I think, in the United States. In this order, I not only bought a couple of discount frags, but I also got a couple of invertebrates that I wanted to try out namely snails and a sand sifting starfish. I'm hoping they'll be alive and well as soon as I get this box open and we can start to acclimate them. I took this tank shot in mid-July just so that I could start tracking how much growth my corals have and or whether my corals are initiating in warfare, which I will point out later in this video. But everyone seems to be doing pretty well, at least as of this posting. I did have a few melt, but you live and you learn. To start the process of acclimation, I'm going to put the starfish in the top just to make sure the temperature is the same between the water in the bag and the tank. With the frogs I got, I'm going to put them in a little quarantine bucket so that I can dip them with Coral RX, which should help kill off any sort of pests or other crap that usually comes on coral frogs. I'm going to acclimate and use Coral RX at the same time with my tank water. So that way it's kind of both in one. I've also been adding tank water to the starfish bag while I'm getting ready to dip the coral frogs. And it's been about 30 minutes, so I wanna put my starfish in the tank so that he kind of stops stressing out, but we'll see. Sometimes with invertebrates, it's it's a mixed bag, um, and this guy seems super healthy and is definitely alive. So I'm praying that he'll he'll make it for the long run. It was kind of funny because no sooner that I put him in my tank did he do what he probably does in the wild and that's, you know, 
bury himself into the sand and start sifting it because it's a sand sifting starfish. Someone else decided to come out and see what I was doing. I added this firefish goby maybe a week before I took this video and I didn't actually see him until I took this video so it was kind of funny because I was like, oh I thought you may have been a goner, but you're not and you're curious about what's going on. So that's great. I decided to get a clownfish to encourage my firefish goby to come out even more and it's worked. Both the clown and the goby are always in the middle of the tank together. After adding the two fish, I decided it was time for a water change. I also ordered some in-tank media filters that are custom-made plastic filters for the back chambers of the Fluval Evo 13.5. And I thought these were totally necessary because I do have an algae problem as others have already pointed out. It's growing in between my corals and that's not super healthy for them. An in-tank media filter will essentially give you more chambers in which to put media that helps with filtration. So I can add more carbon or more chemipure or I can add more rocks to increase the bacteria load, which will also allow for more bio load, which I've now added because I have two fish. Here is the before shot of the algae problem within my tank. I'm going to try to hand remove as much as I can with it, but before I actually do that, I'm going to scrape down the walls of the tank. And that will just get all of the algae currently growing on the walls into the water column so that when I do a water change momentarily, I can get most of that to come out right with the water. So I'm going to add my filtration media with the in-tank filters right away. So that way, if there's any debris that comes out of the filtration, that will also go into the water column and hopefully I can minimize the amount that is coming out of the new filtration media. Here's what the in-tank media baskets look like and I find them very neat and orderly when compared to Fluval's brick that they give you when you first unbox the tank. It's just not easy to remove and it gets gross quickly. Now that I've changed out my media, I'm going to start pulling out all of this nasty algae or at least as much of it as I can. My snails and my hermit crabs are not eating it quickly enough and unfortunately I think that's harming my corals, or at least can harm my corals long term, as some have pointed out. So I'm trying to just remove as much as possible. My snail in this video seems to be very pleased that I'm removing all of this algae. I feel like maybe I'm at least making it more manageable for him, so he's snacking away while I'm pulling up as much as I can otherwise. Once I've removed as much algae as I feel like I could, I started just getting little bits and pieces out with a siphon and also started taking out some of the water so at least I could do a 30% water change with the hopes of doing another 40 to 50% water change within a week, which I'm having to mix up a ton of water for that right now. A commenter on the initial video mentioned that I should try Vibrant in order to get rid of the algae, so I added that in with my water change and I'm hoping to see a difference within the next couple of weeks. But until then, I'm just going to try to enjoy my tank and hopefully I won't have any issues between this update video and my next update video which I'll probably do in another three month stretch and maybe we can compare the next six months together. 
Thanks so much for watching you guys. If you like this video, please go back and watch the first video where I show how I put this tank together. Again, I'm fairly new to the reefing hobby, so I'm open to any comments or suggestions if you have any. I'm also planning to upgrade this tank within the year because my chalice is stinging my acans, which I wasn't aware of, but I should have been because chalices are very aggressive coral. So the next video will probably address that happening. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and we may have some plants and fish, freshwater fish, for my next video.